Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib of Michigan, thank you so much for being here today. Um, Congresswoman, I'll be the first to admit that we in the media, we don't talk enough about the role of corporate lobbying in our politics. How bad is it from your perspective and how badly is it complicating the negotiations over the reconciliation and infrastructure bills? I mean, I think many of us already knew that the process was tainted by special interest groups. I mean, just the sheer number of healthcare lobbyists, uh, and I hate calling them healthcare lobbyists, let's just say anti, you know, uh, 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 making uh, healthcare in our country affordable and, and accessible to all. So the, there has just been a number of those folks that have been there and been funded by the, I think, corporate greed among uh, the folks that benefit from us continuing to have these broken systems. And so it is bad. It is bad, especially when we have a continuation of uh, folks being misled to believe that there is no solution in regards to addressing things around the high cost of pharma, uh, uh, medication. The fact that, you know, you got the same kind of special interest group saying uh, that, nope, this is not the approach to climate crisis. When uh, science and when uh, folks in the academic area and others have been telling us uh, that we've been doing it wrong for so long. And that's why so many people like myself and others who are not taking corporate PAC dollars are actually so winning at a higher rate uh, our elections. So you mentioned the difference between you and other members of Congress. You've been one of the House members who's been pretty tough on Big Pharma. This is you at a hearing on drug prices in September 2020. Have a listen. It seems that Teva company ex expected Copaxon sales to decline if it de decreased donations through these grants. Is that correct? This is more than 10 years before I joined the company. And no, I wasn't there, it's so pretty I clear. It's pretty clear, Mr. Schultz. In my district, Mr. Schultz, we call this a side hustle. Your pharmaceutical company makes these so called charitable donations, so you look like you give a shit about sick people. But in reality, these are just another scheme by your corporation to make money off of sick people. Why don't more of your colleagues in Congress take that approach? They didn't all grow up in Detroit, Mehdi. And so I, you know, look, I grew up in a, in a city uh, that uh, speaking truth is just part of who you are. You know, the continuation of big pharma and the health, you know, those that are against all of us having access to health care, those that are against us having clean water, those that are against us having access to clean air. Those folks are all joining efforts behind the scenes and tainting the process with, through their donations and through whining and dining many of my colleagues who continue to want to be disconnected, I think, with the pain of many of our families. Senator Cinema ran on things like lowering prescription drug prices and making health care more affordable. Did she cave to Big Pharma once she got into office? Or was she lying about wanting those things back then? What are Democratic Party voters supposed to think? You know, I'm not sure. You know, look, uh, she is from a different state, uh, different constituency. Uh, I have a young girl. Carly, who lobbies me every single year. You know, she's not. She's in high school. She lobbies me every single year. She has diabetes, she has other rare conditions, and is telling me how her mother, who has to work multiple jobs, uh, has to really uh, find ways to be able to pay for her daughter's care. And no one should, it should not be this hard in our country. We're, you know, literally one of the, the richest countries in the world. And so I, what I do know is that People are really fed up and they want to do some things very direct in regard to the high cost uh, of, of, of prescription drugs. And, and again, these are residents and neighbors that are sick. Uh, these are not uh, uh, folks yes. that are, you know, again, they're really very much struggling. But, but Congresswoman, but Congresswoman, this problem is that this is not a Republican. It's easy for you to say, well, evil Republicans are in the way of our agenda. This is a fellow Democrat. She may be from a different state, but she's in your party. She's currently blocking the plan you support. She refuses to speak to her constituents, doesn't respond to protesters who are following her around. She didn't even respond to questions from NBC's own Garrett Haig when he asked her about reconciliation today. Who does she talk to? Have you heard from her or her aides? No, I mean, I've been talking directly with my residents and directly with organizations that are member based that want to see change in our healthcare industry. And they want big pharma to back off so that we don't have to suffer uh, any longer in regards to access to healthcare. I cannot respond to what 
is going on in the minds and the hearts of many of my colleagues. Uh, I know this much. I used to be that organizer that did those direct actions where over and over again, I felt completely unheard and unseen by those that represented me. And it was heartbreaking, especially because I grew up in that frontline community. I still live in a frontline community where, you know, smelling that uh, we thought was normal. The fact that, you know, you had people or neighbors working three jobs so they can afford their meds was considered normal. It's not normal. Uh, so all I can do is come and bring those stories with me to Congress and hope that people like Senator Sinema and others hear us. So let's talk about the Build Back Better budget reconciliation package that she is currently blocking along with Senator Manchin. President Joe Biden is in your home state today trying to sell the bill to the American people. He's reportedly told you and your colleagues that it may have to come down from 3.5 trillion over 10 years to between 1.9 to 2.3 trillion. Is that acceptable to you, to the House Progressive Caucus, to come down that much? You know, I'm not looking at that dollar amount right now, Mehdi. I have to look at what's in it and whether or not it is going to provide yeah. child care, whether or not it's going to respect my immigrant neighbors, whether or not it's going to actually address the fact that we don't have clean air in my county where 12 of my communities are. I mean, these are the things that I have to be able to look at directly and be able to understand, like, you know, what the president did say no one's talking about is focus on what your values or what you need to be in this bill. And then I think for many of us, we want to do that and then decide, you know, well, what is it going to cost? Because I'll tell you this much, uh, it's going to cost zero based on the plan that we have now. The report by Trillion is going to be paid through what I call folks paying their fair share. Congresswoman, before I let you go, one quick last question. We've got an impending debt ceiling deadline. Republicans are saying, well, Democrats should do it on their own through reconciliation or getting rid of the filibuster. Now, they may be saying that in bad faith, but they happen to be correct. If, God forbid, the debt ceiling doesn't happen, if we default on our debt and turn into a massive recession, that is going to be on the Democrats. The Democrats control every branch of government. Um, look, I don't know who it is on. I think it's it's about doing the right thing. You know, I'm really uh, exhausted from those that are, you know, doing these political gaming shifts that's going to hurt families. I mean, it really literally is going to hurt every single, I think, person across the country, uh, not those even at the top that are more worried about the stock market. I'm more worried about uh, the unemployment rate, uh, the fact that many of my folks have to rely on, and, and much of that spending, no matter what, you know, this back and forth of where did it come from. It, the fact of the matter is doing nothing is not an option here. And, you know, I hope my colleagues wake up uh, and understand that we have to move aggressively and meet that deadline. So again, no many, many of our families that are still hurting from this pandemic that continues to roar through our communities that we again act with that same urgency. I think that's required right now. Urgency indeed. Congresswoman Rashida Taleb, thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.